Hello and welcome to the Friday, June 16th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. When talking about vulnerability management, one step that's often overlooked is to actually verify if the fix that you applied works and thus prevent the vulnerability that it's supposed to prevent. Weixing's diary today has an interesting case where, well, uh, this is exactly sort of what happened. It was a vulnerability in, well, Adobe Acrobat Reader, and this vulnerability was related to executing JavaScript and PDFs, something, of course, that often has caused problems. So we wanted to just disable JavaScript processing in PDFs and found two different instructions to do so. One from the vulnerability management tool that uh, we used and the second instructions from Adobe itself. Not surprising, the Adobe instructions did actually work while the vulnerability management tools instructions did did not block the execution of JavaScript as advertised. If you would have just followed the tool's instructions, well, you would have been left with a potentially vulnerable system. I find that in particular organizations that focus on speed when patching sometimes uh, take shortcuts when it comes to actually validating that the patch did fix the vulnerability. So don't skip that step. It's important. Otherwise, you may end up with more vulnerabilities than you bargained for. And imagine this, we do have a new vulnerability in Move It Transfer. It's a critical vulnerability, no CVE available yet as of June 15th. And this vulnerability allows escalating privileges, but also allows unauthorized access to the environment. As for the prior vulnerabilities, the workaround is again to disable all HTTP and HTTPS traffic. If you still need HTTP, HTTPS access, to the environment. Well, uh, one thing that uh, Progress does uh, suggest here, you could set up a remote desktop access to the Windows machine running a move it and then essentially just access it using a local host. Of course, in this case now, you're also getting into all of the issues with remote desktop access. And there are also pretty much daily now new stories about new attacker groups jumping on a bandwagon and exploiting vulnerable move it instances. We also have a notable vulnerability in the Citrix share file storage zone controller. This is a system that allows you to save data in the cloud due to a vulnerability in this product. The system may be compromised. CVE 2023-24489, it's rated critical and patches are available. HP security team wrote up a new Chrome Loader variant. Chrome Loader is malware that has been around for a while, keeps evolving. The problem with Chrome Loader is, well, it's a browser extension and one of the New tricks that it sort of has up its sleeve is that, for example, if you're trying to go to the Chrome colon extensions URL, which is usually used to manage your extensions, you're actually being redirected to Chrome settings. And that way it makes it more difficult to actually then remove and even identify this malicious extension. For the most part, Chrome Loader is just interested in showing you ads. It will manipulate, for example, your search uh, results. And yes, it will also periodically exfiltrate data to a command and control server. And if you wonder how users could possibly get infected with malware like this, well, they actually install it themselves by downloading pirated movies and video games. And Checkmarks found an interesting way how a NPM package was manipulated. The package's name is BigNum. And the problem here was that the package itself was actually not altered at all. Instead, the attacker did hijack S3 buckets that uh, did serve binaries that were necessary for BigNum to function. Once installed, the malicious binaries will then sort of go for the regular supply chain attack techniques like trying to steal user IDs, passwords, 
local machine environment variables, which often, of course, uh, do include API keys and the like. So in order to probably increase uh, the attack group's footprint. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Remember, there will be no podcast on Monday due to the Juneteenth holiday. Also, no podcast on Wednesday due to some travel that I'll be doing on Wednesday. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Tuesday.